Ken Jeong, and I'm your celebrity substitute. Have you ever wondered why when you eat a chocolate chip cookie, you never see the chocolate chips again? Where do they go? As a biology teacher, I get a lot of strange questions about how your body works, but in order for me to explain where the disappearing chocolate chips are going, you're gonna have to understand the body system. But the thing is, I'm not gonna teach you this lesson. I've been working way too hard trying to get my online classes running, and honestly, I need a break. Luckily, we've convinced a very special substitute to fill in for me today. He's not only a star, but he's also a licensed physician. Today's celebrity substitute is Ken Jong. Hi. Hi, Ken. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. How are you? Fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. No, look at all the accolades behind you on the wall. Thank you for having me. <laughs> They're just props that mean nothing. <laughs> But no, it really is an honor and a privilege to be part of this very special project, and uh, let's educate, yo. To start this lesson, we have to ask what happens to food once we eat it. And to understand what happens to food once we eat it, I'm gonna have to teach you how human bodies work. So let's dive into the human body systems. The human body overall has 11 major organ systems. Digestive, reproductive, urinary, musculoskeletal, lymphatic, immune, nervous, endocrine, respiratory, integumentary, circulatory. I like to remember these systems using a little mnemonic device or acronyms, if you will, where every letter corresponds to a different body system. I just think of Drumline Rick. Drumline, it's a movie starring my mass singer co-star Nick Cannon and Rick. Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Woo! Both great things. The circulatory system is your blood, blood vessels, and heart. Look at me. I have a good heart. The integumentary system is your skin. Look at me. I'm a celebrity. Therefore, I have thin skin. The respiratory system is your lungs, windpipe, and airways, inhaling oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide gas. I'm a celebrity, therefore I am full of gas. <laughs> the endocrine system is made up of the glands that secrete hormones. It helps regulate your body systems and controls things like adrenaline. When I perform, I get an adrenaline rush, yo. Then you've got the nervous system, and that's the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. The immune system is like your body's security guards, keeping you safe from intruders. Not unlike my human security guards, of which I have three. The lymphatic system drains fluids and substances away to be filtered, excreted, and recycled. It's kind of like the body's garbage disposal. Not to be confused with my security guard who disposes my garbage. The musculoskeletal system is my skeleton and all the muscles, tendons, and ligaments that are attached to it. I don't lift weights, therefore I have weak muscles. The urinary system, well, that's like your pipes. The urinary system is how your body is actually filtering your blood and getting rid of toxins and waste. And then the reproductive system is how humans reproduce. It's how babies are made. And my wife and I made two. <laughs> and now that you've gotten an overview of the body systems and we understand that they're all interconnected, let's take a look at how a single system works from start to finish. And that system is going to be my favorite system, the digestive system, because I like to eat. I'm about to demonstrate how the digestive system works, and I'm gonna do it in the most personal way possible using my own body. I'm gonna eat a food, and then we'll watch as it travels through my digestive system. But first, I've got to decide what food I'm going to eat. Actually, can, can one of my students help us pick what we're gonna do for this next demonstration? No. Kidding. Yes, I'd be honored. That's a great idea. I'd love to have one of your students help me out as long as they like five of my movies. Hey, Desiree, how are you doing? Hi, Miss Haley. I know we were going to be doing an online lesson together, but I actually have someone here who's going to help do the lesson with us, okay? Okay. Celebrity substitute Ken Jong. Hi. Hi, how are you doing, Desiree? I'm so good, how are you? Fine, 
thank you for helping me out. Thank you for doing this. Of course. Are you doing okay? Doing good? I'm good. I'm nervous. <laughs> oh no, it's it's nothing to be nervous about. It's uh, it's just me, the dumbest guy from the Mass Singer. Okay, so Desiree, we've been doing a whole lesson on the digestive system, and we are actually, well, not me, but Ken needs your help picking something out to kind of get this lesson going. Okay. Okay, so Desiree, this is um, really, really important, and Hannah and I need your help. And I don't mean to make you nervous, but there's a lot of stakes involved. Can you help us out? I think I'm up for the challenge. Okay. Bear with me. Wait for it. Oh, man, I'm getting nervous myself. Um, Desiree, you have to pick which one of these cookies I eat. These are important cookies, celebrity cookies. You need to make your choice clearly and wisely. I tried choosing it myself, but it took me over six hours. The one with more chocolate chips. Desiree, are you a member of a think tank? That's amazing. Wow, you weren't kidding. She is smart. The goal of the digestive system is to take food and break it down into nutrients that the body can use. So, prepare to become nutrients, nutrients, nutrients. Oh, my digestive system starts working before the food even gets to my mouth hole. The sight and smell of food alerts my body's digestive processes to get started. Mm. Now, my teeth are breaking the cookie down into smaller, more manageable pieces. And I'm really getting that saliva mixed in with the food. My saliva contains an enzyme, amylase, that helps break down the starch in that cookie. And the saliva also gets the food slippery so it can smoothly travel to its next stop in the digestive system, the esophagus. I can feel the muscles in my esophagus contracting to get that cookie moving on down. And at the end of the esophagus, a muscular valve contracts and relaxes to allow the food to enter my stomach. And once the food reaches the stomach, it gets broken down by gastric acid that's formed within the stomach lining that's also made up of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride. And that mixes with digestive enzymes that break down the carbs, proteins, and fats into their smaller building blocks. And as soon as that cookie gets broken down enough, it's gonna start moving out of my stomach and into my small intestine. And scene. So the small intestine is called small, but really it's anywhere from 9 to 27 feet. The large intestine's only 5 feet long, so that's kind of counterintuitive, right? Yeah, it's like the intestines of irony in the house. But we call the small intestine small because it's narrower than the large intestine. And we're talking about diameter here not length. And the small intestine is lined with a mucous membrane that allows nutrients to pass through. Digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and bicarbonate work to break down food small enough so it's possible to be absorbed. After the small intestine, the food moves into the large intestine. And when the cookie gets to the large intestine, all that's remaining is water, electrolytes, and waste products. And at this point in the digestive system, we're mostly dealing with the parts of the cookie that couldn't be absorbed as nutrients. And the large intestine will absorb the water. And the rest, to be polite, because it's YouTube learning, let's call it stool. So why would we eat a cookie? Don't the chocolate chips make it all the way to the stool? Well, simple sugars are digested by enzymes in the small intestine and to a small extent in the mouth right after we eat them. Then they're immediately absorbed into our bloodstream. It's unlikely that any more than the just teeny tiniest amount of sugar is making it to the very end of the digestive tract. So that's where the chocolate chips are disappearing to, your blood. Isn't that amazeballs? Yes, it is. Well, thank you, Desiree, so much for helping us out. We really, really appreciate it. And most importantly, you taught me how to count chips. When I think of counting chocolate chips, I will always think about Desiree, yo. Bye, Desiree. Thank you so much. Bye.
Hannah, it has been an honor teaching alongside you. And I just have one more question. Yes, Kim, what's up? Might I use the bathroom? As long as you sign out. Aw, classic teacher Hannah, yo. Give me that hall pass. All you, five minutes. I'm gonna need 15. <laughs> Sorry. Class is over and you did great. You wanna get some extra credit? Hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a celebrity substitute lesson right here on YouTube.